Super Smash Brothers Melee! Sup guys, I think we're going to go to a hospital recently. And the easiest way to do that is to try and pull off some advanced tech in Super Smash Brothers Melee. So let's just try and perform a wave shine real quick. And Super Smash Bros. Melee, the game that just refuses to die. The first Super Smash Bros. was a game that, while fun, has certainly aged in a few aspects. It's kind of slow, there weren't a ton of extra modes outside of core fighting, the characters look like video game equivalents of a cheap-ass popsicle, and overall the game just felt like it could have been much grander than the N64 would have allowed it. Which is where Melee comes in. Melee expanded the definition of what a Smash Bros. game could be, so much so that nearly all of the aspects people enjoy about the games today could probably be traced back to just this one title alone. It has faster gameplay, more characters, more stages, more modes. Melee is the game that really put the Smash Bros. series on the pedestal it's on today. But it's still the Smash Bros. game I put the least amount of hours into, so let's just give it a little look so you see why it's still so beloved all these years later. Super Smash Bros. Melee's development started a few months after Smash 64's release, with Monster Hero Sakurai and Hell Laboratories once again taking on directing and developing duties respectively. The game was said to be one of the first titles for the then upcoming Nintendo GameCube, and the team quickly went to work with the intent of showcasing the graphical upgrade between consoles and improving upon Smash 64's more experimental design. The entire game was developed in only 13 months, and Sakurai stated that at the time this was the largest project he had ever worked on. Despite this though, Sakurai called his lifestyle destructive during this time, barely taking any time off for breaks or holidays and the like. Man, what an innovator Sakurai is, taking part in crunch culture 20 years prior to its mainstream popularity. At E3 2001, Melee was unveiled to the world through its opening movie and a few snippets of gameplay. The game would later release in November and December 2001 for Japan and America respectively, and May 2002 for Power Regions, those poor saps. Getting into the game now, Super Smash Bros. Melee begins with an intro that defines a generation. It's an amazing CGI spectacle, showcasing character after character, being cool or doing whatever the hell Donkey Kong is doing. You could teach film classes on this intro, that's how good it is. The music accompanying it is incredible as well, and it all ends with a voice shattering... Speaking of characters in the intro, Melee is the game that's responsible for bringing so many Smash Bros. mainstays to the franchise. Alongside all the characters from the first game, we have easy shoe-ins like Princess Peach, Bowser, Ganondorf, and Zelda, who can turn into Sheik from Ocarina of Time, popular picks like Falco from Star Fox and Mewtwo, obscure slash retro picks like the Ice Climbers, Mr. Game & Watch, and Marth and & Roy from the then-Japan exclusive Fire Emblem series, and clones! Yeah, due to Melee's short development cycle, 6 of the total 25 character roster are clones of other characters, simply because they were easy to develop for. The aforementioned Falco, Roy, and Ganondorf are clones of Fox, Marth, and Captain Falcon respectively, which is especially strange for Ganon considering the two aren't from the same series, and then there's Dr. Mario, Young Link, and Pichu who are clones of Mario, Link, and Pikachu. Overall, I gotta say, this roster is fantastic. Despite the clones, the amount of playable characters has more than doubled from last time, and so many of these picks here are just no-brainers for Smash. Peach can finally get revenge on Bowser for all those times he kidnapped her, all three holders of the Triforce are here, Mr. Game & Watch and the Ice Climbers are super cool throwback picks, and while Marth and Roy being here may have caused the Great Fire Emblem Plague of the 21st century, their inclusion here helped add some variety and even helped convince Nintendo to bring the franchise to the States. But the characters only scratch the surface on the amount of new things Melee introduced to the series. There are 26 brand new stages, with 3 being reused from Smash 64, and a ton of these are series classics. Peach's Castle and Hyrule Castle, Brinstar, Yoshi's Story, Fount of Dreams, Corneria, Pokemon Stadium, Onet, f***ing Pokey Floats. Alongside the introductions of Battlefield and Final Destination to the series. A lot of the stages have a lot more hazards compared to Smash 64 stages, which can be kind of annoying, but in my opinion only stages like Jungle Japes, Ice Cold Mountain, and Big Blue really suffer from them, so it's all good. That's not to mention that the music for these stages and the overall game as a whole is godlike. Rather than porting already existing Nintendo songs into the N64 sound chip, Melee takes the time to create incredible remixes of these iconic songs that in turn became iconic as well. A similar mentality to the stages carry over to the items as well. A ton of new items were introduced to the franchise here like the Bunny Hood, Metal Box, and Mr. Saturn to name a few, that all became series standards from here on out. Overall gameplay has seen a bit of a facelift. 
The game is still structured around how Smash 64 was designed, but movement speed has been drastically increased, and characters even have additional moves like new grabs and a side special. As a whole, Melee is just so much more fun to play than Smash 64, and it helps that the game doesn't look half bad either. The game stages look incredible even today, though I do think the character models have aged a little. This was at a time when Nintendo was still perfecting what these characters looked like, so as a result you have Yoshi looking as malnourished as he does here. None of the characters look atrocious though, and the game still looks pretty sharp overall. While Smash 64 only had like one mode for single player offerings and multiplayer battling, Smash Melee looks at that and says, that's cute. Melee has so much extra content shoved into it for both single player and multiplayer that it's insane. On the single player side we have Classic Mode, formerly referred to as the one player game. It's structured pretty similarly to how it was in Smash 64. Go through 11 fights in minigames, beat a boss, watch the credits, and repeat. Where it differs however is in the fights themselves. Instead of being the exact same fight for every single character, Melee randomizes what character you fight which helps to keep things interesting. Throughout the mode you'll play three minigames, the once again returning target smash and race to the finish that are thankfully much more fun than they were in Smash 64, as well as a new one, Sank the Trophy. You see, in a lot of the modes you can find these collectibles called trophies. They're models of characters and objects from a variety of Nintendo franchises that can be moved and viewed to your liking. The trophies cover a great variety of Nintendo's catalog, both new and old, region exclusive, hell there are even a couple from games that have yet to be released. The trophies are incredible extras to have and collect, and they help to turn this game into a historical time capsule. They're just incredible. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked, let's get back to Melee's modes. At the end of Classic Mode, you face off against the once again returning Master Hand alongside a new boss, Crazy Hand, who only appears if you beat the mode on normal or higher, with no continues, and in under 6 minutes. Besides Classic Mode, the other main single player mode of Melee is Adventure Mode. This mode's really cool, man. You get to traverse through a ton of different locations from Nintendo franchises. You get to run through the Mushroom Kingdom, traverse a dungeon in Zelda, escape Brinstar's explosion, and get run over by Cars in Mute City. I love this mode a lot because it really highlights a lot of the crossover opportunities the Smash series can have. Beyond that though, the mode does lose a lot of its luster the more it goes on. The cool fanservice-y moments go away pretty quickly, leaving you with just standard fights on already existing stages. At the end of the mode you fight against Bowser on Final Destination, who can turn into the newly introduced Giga Bowser who, like Crazy Hand, only appears should you beat the mode on normal or higher and in under 18 minutes. And finally there's one last main single player mode, All Star Mode. All Star is unlocked after getting every playable character in the game, and it challenges you to defeat said characters at only one life. The mode provides you with three heart containers to use in a rest area between fights, thus forcing you to decide whether you want to play things safe or risk getting KO'd. If you're in the mood for some other modes, Melee's got you covered with event matches. These are 51 fights under specific challenges or scenarios, and I gotta say, they are a hoot and a half. They're just really fun and creative, and while some of these can be painfully difficult, they're still pretty good overall. The stadium mode provides some fun distractions like the home run contest where you abuse Mr. Sandbag over here to see how far he'll fly, target smash which is just the break the targets mode from classic mode except available wherever you want, and multi-man melee which is just the fighting polygon team fights from Smash 64 except the models are now wireframes instead of a jumble of polygons. There are a couple of different versions of multi-man melee, some based on a time limit or amount of enemies to defeat, but then there's cruel melee where the CPUs are pumped on Adderall and will annihilate you without a second thought. How fun. But man, that's only scratching the surface of things to do in Melee. You can practice in the training mode, set up a tournament, mess around in special Melee which changes attributes of the matches like making everything be sped up or in slow motion, or letting everyone play with one button if you're a sadist. There's even a new match type called Coin Battle which sadly doesn't let you beat up your opponents with coins, and instead makes you live out the capitalist dream and getting the most money to win. As a whole, Melee just offers so much content in its overall package, but what if you're seeking more out of it and hate your fingers? Well, the Melee competitive scene is just for you, all because of some glitches and oversights in the game's code, no doubt due to the short development time, thus creating advanced techniques for better movement or double inputs. This is where you'll see tech like multi-shines, wave dashes, and all cancels, and while I do find some joy in learning and pulling off these techniques, I don't like playing Melee competitively. I'm okay with competition in games, I do like most fighting games, and I'm decently skilled in all the Smash games going forward, but Melee is just something I'm not all too interested in, mostly because I like not having tinnitus in my wrists. I still respect the competitive Melee community though, 20 years later and these guys are still just playing what they love. That's pretty respectable, even if I personally don't watch competitive Melee nor feel joy towards some of the more toxic fans in the community. Well in the end, Super Smash Bros. Melee is the game that in a way really created the Smash Bros. formula that all other games would be based off of going forward. It's packed to the brim with content and extra modes, tweaked the presentation and gameplay to an all new level, and was just overall a huge step forward for the franchise. While I didn't grow up on it, I can still confidently say it's one of the shining gems of the Smash series, and may quite possibly be the most important Smash game of them all. While it may have aged here and there, Super Smash Bros. Melee is still a phenomenal game. 
However, I still can't help but be disappointed by Coin Battle not actually letting you use coins to fight people with. So because of that, I've decided to turn into a real thing. I got some ammunition here and I'm ready to go. So apparently aggressively throwing coins at homeless people is some kind of crime or something. Maybe we should have done a time battle instead. Oh.